What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today we are going to do the part two of CO2 gas testing with a MIG welder. And we're going to do some bend tests to see what the hell happens and if it's as strong as C25 gas. So let's get into it. All right, so there's a couple things I'm going to cover real quick. One, it's piss poor and rain outside, and I want to get this video done. So guess what? We're going to have to deal with the rain sounds. Hopefully it's not too distracting. And two, this is part two. The part one video, I put a link in the description. You would probably be better off watching that first and coming back for this. But if you don't want to do that, whatever, your choice. Now, in part one, I covered... CO2 testing as far as a cut and etch, but we did not do brake tests. And I think that's an important part of this whole testing on using CO2 gas with a MIG welder to determine differences. Now, in the first part video, we saw a huge increase in root fusion penetration and just overall the weld worked better on thicker plate. We were actually able to achieve uh, more than a decent amount of penetration on 3 8 plate, which is something that C25 gas with a normal MIG welder can't achieve. Now, we're going to be testing with 3 8 plate. That's what I have. We're going to do one bend test away from the face and one towards the face to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Now, in the past, I've done a ton of bend tests uh, away from the face. And this is a 7018 weld. This is a MIG weld. And Standard C25 MIG gas has no problem on 3 8 plate being bent this far. I mean, this is a MIG weld here, but you can see how far that's bent, and it did not give up even though it's a single pass on 3 8 plate. And something I didn't really mention, but a lot of the smart viewers of this channel had talked about it with me, and that is that C25 gas actually will have higher destructive test results than C100, so 100% CO2. And there's a lot of reasons behind that, but the simple fact is, is that when you run 100% CO2, you will lose some tensile strength, you may lose some elongation and ductility, it changes the weld that you deposit. Now, it's not enough to where the wire will test below AWS specs, but when you see like ER70S6, 70,000 is the minimum tensile strength. It's not actual test results. In 99, well, pretty much 100% of the cases, the wire will test far over AWS spec. It's just that's the minimum. Well, what that means is, is that using 100% CO2 will still produce a weld that's over AWS spec of 70,000, but it will be under C25 gas. So that's pretty interesting. Now, when I weld these up, I'm kind of a little bit suspicious that on a fillet weld bend test away from the face, like these two are, I'm kind of suspect that 100% CO2 gas might, the weld might fail on it before it achieves the same bend that these two did. We won't know unless we test it. I'm hoping that's not the case because in welding in general, it's like anytime you get more of something, it comes at the cost of something else. So like, oh, you want super penetration? All right, your weld is on the weaker side. Or hey, you want a really strong weld? Oftentimes the penetration is less. So it's just, that's welding in general. It's like an enigma. You can't have everything you want in one thing. It just doesn't work that way. That's life though too, I guess, right? So anyways, with that said, I'm gonna get set up and I'm gonna run the same settings of 430 inch per minute, 25 volts as I did in the previous test. We're gonna weld up two fillet welds and we'll break them. So let me get set up and get welding this. So first up, we're going to bend towards the face and break this fillet weld on 3 8 plate. Now, I'll be honest, this weld, I hit more of the bottom plate than the top plate, so my gun angle is a little bit off. And not only that, the weld itself seems to have sunk down more than what C25 gas would normally be. So it's kind of favoring that bottom plate. This test normally breaks somewhere at around 100 foot-pounds, maybe a little bit more for standard unbeveled plates with short circuit MIG. 
And I do have a spare plate that we can test if need be as well. So let's break this sucker. And well, of course it cleared itself about 122 or 124 in that ballpark. So that's a really good number I would say for unbeveled plates, especially with a weld that favored one side more than the other. All right, let's look at the results of this and go from there. So I was an idiot in welding this onto this test apparatus rather than running a little spot weld, which is more than enough. Of course, I had to do a full length weld. And not only that, I definitely nailed the 45 degree angle. And I have a feeling this is going to be an absolute bastard to break. Yeah, I'm almost, I wish you could see this. Let me show you. I bent it a little bit, but look at the amount of strength that this has. Jesus. So here this bastard is, and I gotta tell you, man, I almost blew a gasket breaking it off of there. <laughs> the root fusion, it bit all the way through the plate end to end, other than a little bit near the end. It's a little bit suspect, but my God, that stuff definitely penetrates in there. So let's do a close up look at this. So here is the weld internals, and even though I ended up favoring more of the bottom plate, it still broke pretty much right through the middle of the weld, which to me is a more desirable result than detaching from one plate or the other. And a lot of that has to do with how good the sidewall fusion is running CO2 gas. Now, interestingly enough, so this whole edge, other than this little bit right here, has broken down the original edge completely, aka we have root fusion and penetration, far better than what I normally see with short circuit MIG. Now, virtually all welding processes will have a little bit of a lack of fusion, lack of penetration right after the initial start. And that's because the weld pool's a little bit cold, the corner's easy to light off and melt, but then you get that little bit in and then you get a little bit of lack of fusion, pretty typical. That's why they use start and stop tabs or run on and run off tabs with weld mints. So you start off of uh, what you're welding and you don't get that on what you're welding. But again, this whole edge completely broken down. None of that is the original plate edge. So that looks awesome. Uh, definitely far better than what you would find in short circuit MIG. So I like that a lot. Well, why don't we go over and break test the sample we have in the shop press. So I actually have two test welds that we're gonna break in this. I did this one and I had a loose DINs connector on my machine and about two thirds of the way through, it kinda fell out on me and well, I finished the weld, it was able to complete it and well, guess what, we got a kind of a defect. So not good, but we're gonna bend test that first cause hey, I did it and I made a mistake, imagine that. Now on this guy, it's a much cleaner weld little bit smaller than this guy. I just probably spent less time welding it. So my travel speed is a little bit faster, but let's uh, start with this guy first. It's actually been quite a decent time since I used this. So it's good to get out and use a sucker again. Let's break it.
almost handled it and tore out of the weld, which not too surprising. All right, let's go and use a clean weld and see if it performs similar. All right, we're all loaded up with that one. Let's bend test it. All right, did it crack? Barely. All right, let's go look at these on the welding bench. So our first test weld, which was a defective weld, uh, broke at the top toe. Now I've done a lot of bend tests in the shop press like this, and this is a very common method of failure, and the reason is pretty simple. This plate is being bent and tugged so much that it's gonna break at the top toe line where there's the most amount of stress more so than ripping the bottom toe off of it. And that has to do with the penetration of the weld as well as, like I said, how much stretching force is being applied where. So this actually took quite a lot of force and it didn't actually catastrophically fail till it was almost bent to what I would call a complete bend. So that for being as defective as it was, not really bad. Now, the second weld, which was basically defect free for all practical purposes, survived 99% of the way on a bend, as you can see, and then it basically tore at the top. That is slightly different than MIG welding with C25. And if you look here, and let me zoom in, this MIG weld here did surpass the bending strength, if you look here, it was able to bend even more and not give up, but there's every indication of a crease and a crack right here at this top toe. So this simply gave up at 99.9%. .9%. This sucker was basically about one pound away from giving up. And 7018, like here, it's a little bit difficult to see it on camera, but again, this is experiencing the same thing and would have cracked with probably, you know, another 5%, 3% more force on that would have cracked. So this isn't too surprising. The good news is this is basically, I would say 99% as strong uh, in this case as C25 gas. It's not quite as strong. And I'm sure if I did this test over and over and over, the results would likely be similar to what we saw here where it gets almost there and then just can't handle it. So pretty interesting. There is, I would say, a loss of maybe ductility using 100% CO2 because I've done, I don't know, 15 MIG weld bends and I've never had one do this. So considering these two did, pretty, I would say pretty confident in the results being that there is a slight strength loss here with 100% CO2. All right, let's go to conclusion. So based on the test results today, what are my thoughts? Well, I think that there is no question that there is a slight strength loss using 100% CO2, and it is very slight. I've done a lot of testing over the past year or so, bend tests, brake tests, all sorts of stuff, and this is definitely up there on strength for a bend like this. And the fact that it cracked at the very last moment, granted 7018 has never done that, but the reality is this is so close that the gain in penetration you get, especially on thick plate, is to me would be worth it. 
And especially if you have a 200 amp class MIG machine that can happen to hit 25 volts, uh, this is a far better process, I would say, with 100% CO2 for welding thick plate. There isn't a hope and a prayer of getting any root fusion and penetration with the short circuit with C25 gas. So I think it's worth the strength loss. Now, one of the things you're probably wondering is, if I had done multiple passes on this, would it have still failed the way it did? Now, I'm not probably going to test that, but I think it still would have failed. I've done a bunch of tests in the past where I did three pass welds like with 6013 and more weld on something like this doesn't make it stronger in this and the reason is simple. Say I did two more passes over this and bent it. The toe of the weld is still going to experience the same stress this does. Having more welds, a uh, more weld material there isn't going to change the stress at that toe line when this flexes. So this broke on here. I have a feeling with two more passes, it's still going to break. But again, the the strength there is still very high. It's higher than what you would find on a bend test with your typical cheap flux core wire. Your T11 is stronger than 7014 rods. Arguably, short circuit with C25 is a bit stronger. 7018 is a bit stronger. I mean, you can see here, and this is kind of a janky weld that did not tear and so realistically, this is very, very close. And again, I think it's an acceptable loss of strength by ever so slight to gain the penetration. Because no doubt this has far more root fusion than 7018 does. I guarantee you it does. And that can be very beneficial because it, if you're getting penetration past the root, Odds are if you hit like say mill scale or some other contaminant or your fit up isn't great, you know your weld is going to be strong because it fused at least something. Like this isn't a process with this 100% CO2. I think you're going to find too many welds that are like, holy shit, what happened to the root where there's like no fusion versus like 7014 rods or with short circuit run too cold, you're going to find that happens. And it's kind of surprising when it does because stuff breaks that a weld looks fine on, but it's clearly not. So with all of that said, would I switch to 100% CO2? Honestly, the performance of it is exceptional, I would say. The lack of spatter, I mean, look at these. This guy here and this. I mean, I did three test welds and there isn't, I, I would almost argue, more than one piece of spatter on this at all. So very clean with the proper voltage, very strong root penetration, root fusion. I like it. Would I switch? Well, uh, maybe I would in the future. I mean, the C25 does produce a little bit better looking weld, I think, and it probably wouldn't burn sheet metal as hot, which would be a plus. But man, I got to say for the cost savings and the performance, if you're if you have the voltage to play with this out of your welder, so at least 24 to 27 volts, you might want to look at this. The cost is about a third as much as the C25, so all good things, and the strength is almost there. Not quite, but it's almost good enough for me, I guess. With that said, if you got any comments or questions or thoughts on this, feel free to leave them. Until next time.